Never Stop Learning, week 287. We're gonna take a quick look at the custom shape tool in Adobe Photoshop CC 2017. All right, so big shout out to CT Scaper. Uh, he was asking me a couple weeks ago how I created this picture frame, and I had to admit to him that I cheated. Uh, and I used a pre-baked shape that uh, comes with Adobe Photoshop. So I figured it'd be fun to show you guys how you could use this same shape. All right, so over here in the tools panel on the left, down towards the bottom, that's where you're gonna find the rectangle tool. Now, if you click and hold in the same stack down at the bottom, that's where you're gonna find the custom shape tool. All right, once I release my mouse, now I have the tool activated and it's ready to go. All right, so I'm gonna click and drag to draw out my shape. In this case, it's gonna be an arrow. All right, so I can resize this guy however I want, and I could hold down the Option key on a Mac, Alt on a PC, and that's gonna allow the shape to grow from the center. If I release the Option key, it's gonna go back to the regular mode. All right, once I have this exactly how I want, I'm gonna release my mouse, and now I have a new arrow on my document. All right, the reason it's an arrow is because over here in the top right, my shape is currently set to arrow. But before I go over the shapes, uh, I wanna go over these other options you have available to you. So let's start on the left. Over here, this is where you have your presets. So once you set this tool up exactly how you want, just come over here, click on this icon, and then you'll be able to use that exact same tool on future projects. All right, over here to the right, we have shape. If I click on the drop down menu, you could change to draw paths. So you could draw uh, paths for, let's say, a mask or, or a selection. And then down over here at the bottom, this is in case you don't want to work with vectors and you just want to work with pixels, then you could draw out some pixel shapes as well. I'm going to leave mine set to shape. Now over here we have fill and stroke. This is really important. Uh, if you click on this fill, this is where you're able to change the color of your shape. So now I have this red arrow. The reason I want to mention this is you might think to jump into the swatches panel. Now let's say I wanted a blue arrow. Notice there's no change over here in the arrow. All right, but down over here in the bottom left, you'll see that my foreground color is now set to blue. All right, so if I want to affect my vectors, I have to come over here to the top in the options and change my fill color in here. All right, next we have stroke. I'm gonna bring this over to a black stroke and think of the stroke as the outline for your shapes. Currently, you can't see the outline because I have a really thin stroke. It's set to one pixel, but if I increase my stroke size, notice it's growing inside towards the center. All right, I'm gonna back off on this guy a little bit. You have control over that just to the right. Over here, you have these stroke options. Down at the bottom, you have this button for more options. So think of this as like the stroke panel that you find inside of Adobe Illustrator. Now, I'm not gonna go over all these options, but over here for a line, currently we have it set to inside. You could change it to center, and now it's kind of like the default settings for Adobe Illustrator. And you could change it to outside. And notice now we have the stroke just coming on the outside of my shape. I'm gonna leave it set to inside, hit okay, and just back out of here. All right, next we have the size of our shape. Notice this little link is dark. That means we have the link connected. So I'm gonna change this from a uh, 255 pixel width to 500 pixels wide. And now I have this large arrow in my document. Let's uh, bring this guy back up here. Great. Now, if you break this link, you could just affect the width or the height. All right, next we have this guy here. We're creating new layers as we go along. If you take a look over here on the bottom right, I have two shape layers now because I have two different shapes in my document. If I were to switch over to combine shapes, then it'd be like we're welding the shapes together. You could also use these other options down here at the bottom. Next, we have the alignment. Over here, this top group, this is gonna align using a vertical axis. Over here in the middle, this is your horizontal axis. Then you have your distribution, and you could tell it to use your selection or canvas. This is gonna affect your stacking order. When we're working with vectors, you have a stacking order so you could bring shapes up or down. Kind of like the same way you would in your layers panel. All right, over here in this little gear wheel, this is important. Before we were just drawing things out unconstrained, but over here you could define your proportions, the size, fixed size, and then remember we had that option modifier. You could actually check this box and it'll be on permanently. 
All right, I'll leave it set to unconstrained uh, and then come over here to align edges. Now, if you turn this on, uh, this is so that you end up aligning everything to the pixel grid. So if you're working on something that uh, needs to be pixel perfect, you got to make sure that this box is checked. All right, now I'm going to click on this drop down menu. And in here, this is where you could choose the different shapes that you're going to be drawing out. Now, these are all really useful, but I want a larger list. You don't even see that picture frame that I had earlier. So let me show you how to find the rest of them. Over here on the top right, you have this gear. Click on it, and you have all these different options. Down at the bottom, these are the different libraries you could load. Now, I like to just load them all. So I'm going to click on all. And then Photoshop's going to ask me, do you want to replace the current shapes with the shapes from all? All right, we have three different options. If I choose append, then it's going to keep these here and add all the new shapes. If I hit cancel, then we're just going to back out and not do anything. If I click OK, then we're going to replace all these shapes and have the new shapes, which is this library called all. All right, so I'm going to click OK to replace those. And now I have all of these different shapes to choose from. If you're wondering where that picture frame is, it's right here. All right, so the cool thing about this is they're vectors, they're yours. If you're paying for your creative cloud service, then you already paid for them, so go ahead and use them. And uh, let me bring one of these guys out. All right, I'm going to click and drag over here. All right, so now I've got this new heart shape here. I'm going to hit Command-C. I'm on a Mac, so if you're on a PC, it's going to be Control-C. And now I'm going to jump into Adobe Illustrator. All right, in here, I'm going to hit Command-V on a Mac, Control-V on a PC. And then I get these paste options, paste as a compound shape or a compound path. I'm going to go with the compound shape, click OK. And now I have this new shape that I could fill in with any kind of uh, stroke color or fill color that I want. So let's come over here. I've got this red heart and it's still all vectors. So if I hit command Y, you're able to see the structure of this. So there you have it, folks. That's a quick look at the custom shape tool in Adobe Photoshop CC 2017.